My name is Jerry Stellenberg, this is Adam Preble, and we're going to talk today about writing custom software for a pinball machine. If you've ever wanted to re-theme or, or build a homebrew machine, or maybe you just want to change the rules on your existing machine, we're going to talk about how to do that. Now, if you've ever thought about doing custom pinball development before, you've really had two options. One is to use the existing CPU board and somehow write code for it, burn it, get that down there. Or to use some kind of custom hardware interface that maybe you've designed and built yourself, done your whole driver circuits and all those things. Both of those solutions, as you can imagine, are quite, quite complicated. You have to understand all the low-level interface logic for a pinball machine. You have to know how to write code to interface to those things. You have to be aware of all the timing and control signals for everything. Well, hopefully by the end of today, Adam and I will convince you, or at least show you, that using a, a PROC board and a custom open source software development framework called PyProc game that it's not nearly as complicated as you probably think. Well, maybe it is. But hopefully it's not to, to write custom software for the machine. So the agenda for today, I'll give you a couple project goals. We have a couple showcases. One we'll show you in the beginning, one we'll show you in the end of some, some actual real life implementations using these things. Uh, we'll talk about the hardware, we'll talk about the software, and at the end, we'll have a questions and answer session. So if you have questions that come up during the presentation, please hold them till the end. I don't know exactly how tight will be for time, so we'll try to get to questions at the end. Uh, and if we don't get to all your questions, then we'll be around all day. Feel free to, to hunt us down and, and ask us whatever it is you need to know. So the goals of the project were pretty much what I said earlier, to, to make it easier to write custom software for a pinball machine. We want to make it so you don't have to be an expert in hardware and software and whatever else you, you, you might have had to learn in the past to, to write custom software. The other main goal was we wanted a platform that would work in a whole variety of generations of pinball machines. Specifically, we were targeting WPC machines all the way from the early WPC through WPC95 and both generations, both recent generations of Stern machines, so all White Star and all Sand machines. We wanted to build a platform that would work the exact same way in all these generations of machines. So before we get started going into the details, a, a little quick video. If you've ever been to the website pinballcontrollers.com, which is the site I run for the PROC board, um, you've probably come across this video, but let's run through it. It's just, it's, it's six to eight months old, but it gives you a good introduction of using this hardware and this software to write custom software. So that video was, like I said, put together about, I guess it's been about 10 months since we, since we put that together. It's, everything you saw was, was custom software. 
So the light shows, the, the DMD displays, everything we wrote from scratch. Um, and now we have all that stuff available, so you can, you can build on top of that. Um, we have a Judge Dread machine. Rob Anthony brought us and is letting us use his Dread machine over in the, the Ball Classics vendor area. Um, so we're going to be there all day showing the latest and greatest version of this one. Feel free to come over, play, ask questions. I'll even have a couple boards for sale if you're interested in buying one at the end of the um, seminar. But 10 months later, we have, a, we have full voice calls, music, sound effects. It's a fully playable game. Maybe a couple issues we have to work through still, but, but it's, it's pretty mature. So feel free to come by and check it out later. OK, so the hardware. What is a P-Rock board? This is a P-Rock board. And you'll notice, maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. This is the exact same shape as a WPC CPU board. Similarly, I have, I have a WPC95 version here. And we also have a stern mounting plate. So if you look on the back, there's actually eight mounting holes. This fits in both a white star machine and a sand machine. So the same board. All three of these are the exact same circuit board, just a different mounting plate. So once you understand how to write code, how to drop this into one machine, you can do it on any, on any generation machine. But specifically, the PROC stands for Pinball Remote Operations Controller. And what it does is it independently manages all of the control circuits on a pinball machine. And by independently, what I mean is, once you configure this board with, with software, you don't have to keep writing your software doesn't have to keep interacting with it. Once it's configured, it'll, it'll manage all the hardware in your machine. It'll manage the, the switch matrix. It'll manage the interface to the driver boards. It'll, it'll manage a dot matrix display. And it does this automatically. But it doesn't run code. There's no CPU on this board. There's no processing element. It doesn't run your software. So where do your rules code go? Where do you, where do you put the, the code to run your game? Well, you connect it to some sort of an external computer, whether it's a a tower computer, or you can even use a credit card size single board computer. As long as this thing has a, a processing element and a USB connection, you can hook it up. So probably most people want someday to take a little credit card size single board computer, drop it in their back box, and no one will ever know that it's not running some stock hardware setup. And yes, I did say USB cable. It doesn't need a parallel port. You don't need to go out and find a motherboard that has some Obscure port, parallel port. I know that's that's an issue for a lot of a lot of homebrew designers, is finding motherboards that they can still use because they're using a parallel port. Like I said, the board itself manages all the hardware control systems on a pinball machine, and we'll go through each one of these individually. So the drivers, I'm calling drivers the things that drive all your coils, lamps, flashers, motors, all, all the play field features in the machine. The P Rock supports 208 drivers. And most of you don't really care about all these details, but if anyone's building a homebrew machine, you're going to want to understand what the hardware can do and what features it can drive. So 32 direct, there are 32 individual pins on this board that you can directly connect to, to transistor circuits. Oh, by the way, this board does not have all the transistors, all the things that sit on a power driver board. You connect this directly to the existing power driver board in the machine. Or if you're building a homebrew machine, you need to, you need to figure out a way to drive your actual coils and things, design your own board, or, or drop in an off-the-shelf WPC or stern power driver board. So it's got the 32 direct, it's got 176 multiplexed, and by multiplexed I mean you can access them using the, the ribbon cable that generally goes from the CPU board to the power driver board. So we can, we can control a whole bunch of drivers. And the way we control those is the hardware exposes a bunch of functions that software can call. So you don't need to write code to individually turn on and off every lamp, every flash, or every coil, whenever you want to do this. Although you can, that's the first function. But we also have functions like a timed function, so you can pulse a coil for however long you want, 30 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, just send a command saying pulse the coil. You can, you can do, if you, say you want to blink a lamp, 